Hello guys and welcome back to our third episode of the Perfect Starter Factory and it is our final of the Perfect Starter Factory series. Today we're going to be talking about power, we're also going to be covering steel and the AI limiters and copper sheets. Once done you will be producing everything that you need really to start scaling up your factory. Now I'm sure a lot of you would like me to continue this mini series but the point of this was to get you started and to give you everything you really need to be able to start building your own larger manufacturing centers which having after this automated power and also giving you a good idea how to get production lines running you should have the bare essentials for that but don't worry we will have plenty more guides available helping you with later uh, more advanced uh, manufacturing such as our super efficient build series and of course I will put a link to that series up above in the right hand corner now but guys if you do enjoy my content don't forget to subscribe and obviously if you find this video helpful please do drop a thumbs up and if you want to listen to some of my music while you're playing the game in the background I'll put a link to my own Spotify playlist where you can listen to some chill lo-fi Anyway, let's get into it. So, thanks to us automating the smart plating, you should now be able to collect 50 from your storage unit. And from here, we're going to take that and place it in the space elevator. Once we've done this, we should have a few new things to unlock at the hub. Now, once you have unlocked it, you can go over to the hub and you will have unlocked tier three and tier four. Now in tier 3, the first thing that we can unlock is the coal power. Now this is going to be super important. We're going to unlock this straight away because it's going to allow us to automate everything. However, one thing that you will need is copper sheets. So that is the first thing that we're going to be manufacturing today. So starting off with the copper sheets and the AI limiters, we're going to build an 8 by 14 grid. So that's 8 across and 14 deep. You can see on this side that I've actually, rather than uh, run 14 normal foundations all along, just at the end, we've done the concrete foundations. This is where we'll be placing our um, con uh, storage containers. So at this point, you want to bring the Caterium, if you haven't already done so, um, around from the node, which is just located on top of that uh, rock over there. And over here, we're going to run the other uh, copper line across to this location here. So what we're going to do for the copper sheets is build a splitter in the middle of the first uh, foundation, which is three foundations across from the wall that we've just deleted. Now in front of that, we're going to place a smelter in the center of the following foundation and also one to the right of that and while we're at it we're also going to do two more in the foundations to the left of that and in front of the smelter that's placed to the left there's going to be another splitter now these two splitters are going to split caterium ore and copper ore into these four smelters the first two are going to be copper, those are the ones on the right, and they're going to run at 100%. On the left hand side we have the two smelters that are for caterium ingots, and they're going to be underclocked 66.666%. Uh, basically what you want is for both of the smelters to be producing 10 caterium ingots per minute. On the opposite side of this, we're then going to place a merger in between the first two smelters and also in front and in the middle of the second two smelters. And we're going to merge both smelters ingots into those mergers. Now on the right hand side where we have the copper ingots and the merger for that, we're going to place a smelter directly in front of that. In the foundations in front of that, we're going to place three constructors. These are going to be set to copper sheets at 100% efficiency and they will be placed spanning each two foundations. And that is because we're not placing them in the middle but on the edge. 
Once you've placed those constructors, we're going to place two more constructors along the same line to the left of those. Now those are going to be for Caterium Quickwire and they're going to be set at, I believe it is 84% clock speed. Now on the other side of the copper sheet ingots, we will have a splitter placed on the far right constructor. It will take 50%, which is five copper sheets along to where we're going to be storing them. And then the other five will be merged with the two constructors next to it to produce the 25 copper sheets, which will be used for the AI limiters. Now for the AI limiters, we're going to place an assembler two foundations in front of the mergers for the quick wire and also the copper sheets. Now if you have it so that the merger for the copper sheets is pointing to the left and the copper and the Caterium quick wire merger pointing to the front, you should be able to do a nice right angle for the copper sheets running straight into the AI limiter assembler. Now at this point, the assembler will be set to AI limiters at 100% efficiency. Now for this, we are then going to send the AI limiters and the copper sheets into the storage units. When it comes to the storage units, we're going to run them along the next side. So we're going to create an L um, shaped factory. Yeah and have the containers go through the wall there. On the opposite side where we have the resources entering the storage units, we're going to do the same as we have in the previous two videos where we're going to run the resource line into a smart splitter and then one of the outputs will be set to the resource heading into the storage unit and then we will have an overflow heading above and merging with the AI limiters and the copper sheets to go to the awesome sink. It doesn't really matter where you place these awesome sinks and you could increase the speed of the line now that we've unlocked Mark II belts, should you wish. But for the ease of this, I'm just going to build two awesome sinks and they're going to be to the left of this particular manufacturing line. Once ready, we're going to unlock whole power. So that's 150 reinforced iron plates, 50 rotors and 300 cable. Having unlocked coal, we should now be able to find it on the scanner and you need to locate your nearest um, coal node. Unfortunately, in the desert, we only have two locations that are near-ish by and they're still a bit of a, a runaway. So the first coal nodes are located above this cliff and these are all pure nodes. Alternatively, the other coal nodes are located just over in the estuary over here. Now there are a total of four coal nodes here. However, one thing to bear in mind is that they're all normal nodes. So knowing where these coal nodes are is great. But the other thing that we need to think about is what we're going to be using them for. If it's specifically for power generation, we're going to need coal that has water nearby, or we're going to have to uh, move the coal or the water to one another. Thankfully, in this location, you'll notice that we have got a lot of water nearby, so we could put a power station here. Or if we're doing steel generation, we're going to require something like the iron, which you can see here. So maybe this location is better off if we want to do steel production. For example, for myself in this build, I'm actually going to take the coal all the way back to our factory and we're going to build a power plant behind the factory we currently have. Because as you can see, we've got plenty of water nearby. To do this, we're going to build a nine by five grid behind the factory where the hub is. So the opposite side to where the hub is, I should say. And from there, we're going to bring the water pipes up from the left-hand side along a foundation uh, line. And we're now going to start by placing down the coal generators. Now for this, we are going to need to place eight coal generators. These are going to be placed facing this direction and we're going to make it so that their back is just along the back foundation. And we can bring that in to here. Now we are going to clip into these to make them more compact. 
and we are going to set up eight generators. Now, if you've watched my cold generator guide, you'll know the system that we're doing, which is relatively easy and allows us to have 600 power, which isn't bad for a small factory. Uh, from this point, we are now going to need to place a line for our coal. Now I'm going to run it from the right. So we're going to grab our splitter and we're going to place it over this column. Now we are running a manifold that's going to just make it simple to do and it's going to take a little bit of time to warm up. But once it is at 100% efficiency, it will uh, run without any problems. Now each of these consume 15 coal per minute, so we are going to need a Mark II line full of coal. I'm using the Mark I belt to connect from the manifold, and we're going to use, by pressing E, the Mark II belts to connect the main uh, through line, I guess you would call it, for this manifold. Now water is a little bit of a pain, and that's why we're going to need the copper sheets. If we have water, we have to use pumps in order to get water above a certain head height. Now there are bugs with water, which I will be covering in a future video, but for now we're going to have to split water from three pipes into these eight coal generators. To do this, we're going to start by placing a manifold line just above and we're going to run this every couple of foundations. And we should probably connect one up here as well. So at this point we are going to grab our pipeline. We're going to bring the water from this area, but we're going to set this up first. We're going to run this all the way along. And from here, we will also add pipeline junctions. Now I'm sure one of you or two of you at the moment are saying how this is one bus line and we can't have that much water in this uh, manifold, which you're absolutely right, we can't. We're going to sort that out in a moment. And we're going to have to, after the fourth generator, place another junction. Then going to connect this up. Try and make sure that it's in the right position to be in line. like so, and we're going to do the same on this side as well, with another line. can do should we wish. Let's connect them like this. A little bit skew if but it works. So what I'm doing now is just making sure that they're all in the center of this foundation. It's just going to make it easier to organize. And from here we're going to connect it over there with some water extractors. At this point, we're now going to add the water extractors. You can see we've got three pipelines here. They probably will need, in fact, they're going to need some pumps as well. So we will place them at the same time.
Now at this point, all you need to do is wait for the coal to enter the generators along with the water, at which point this should all be up and running. So the next thing that we need to do is decorate this. Now for this, I am going to try and keep it relatively simple. Uh, I want to keep it segmented or segregated from the actual factory that we were using before. So we're going to use some concrete walls for this. Finally, we're just going to add a little bit of detail on the back side. And as you can see, the generators are starting to turn on. Perfect. So that just leaves us with steel production. The next thing that we're going to want to unlock is the basic steel production. This will allow us to produce steel beams and steel pipes, as well as versatile framework, which will be used in the space elevator that we next need to unlock. So here we are, we have four foundries running steel ingots at 100%. That's a total of 180 steel ingots per minute. Now these are going to be divided between four constructors, but we're going to have to do this slightly different, uh, di differently rather than just running them along a manifold because we have steel beams which require, I believe, 60 ingots per minute and then we also have these steel pipes which require 30. So we're going to have to do a line or a constructor dedicated for steel beams, then one for steel pipes, then steel beams and steel pipes. And to do this, we are going to, first of all, grab a splitter we're going to place it in front of the first one and then we're also going to do this on the second one or do it on the third one and how we want to go about this and from here we're going to also place a merger in front of the other two we're then going to have to place a merger in front of the splitters And then next we're going to place a constructor. Uh, we're going to place one in front of both of the mergers, but also, well, all mergers even. We're just gonna try and keep them in line. At this point, we want to take the splitters and we want two inputs or output, sorry, going towards the merger in front with one going across to the merger. And then this merger is going to run the steel ingots into this constructor. So what we're doing here is we're splitting 45 steel ingots between three outputs. Each output has 15. So this one will be receiving 30 steel ingots per minute. And this one we'll have the 45 originally, plus the 15 that's just received, meaning it will have 60 per minute. We're going to do the same on this side as well. Like so. And now we have our steel pipes, which require 30 per minute and our steel beams, pipes, and beams. Now in order for us to um, move this towards our storage containers, 
we have to think about how we are going to merge the lines. Let's place that there. As it's two up and two down, I think the best thing for us would be to grab a Mark I conveyor elevator. And for us, we are going to run these a merger all the way along. Yeah. Let's check how many we're producing. 15 per minute, so we can have a Mark 1. And from here, we're going to run this along to here. We can bring it down. At this point, we're going to do the same as we have done before with the smart splitter system. Let's place that there. In fact, you know what? Let's just run it like that. And we're going to do the same here. for the pipes underneath. Again, 20 per minute. So we're receiving 40 um, steel pipes and 30 steel beams per minute. If this fully saturates, we will not have enough uh, room on this line unless it's a Mark II. So any line after this heading towards the sink needs to be a Mark II. I do believe that we're producing only 10 of these per minute. So the next thing that I'm going to do is just change this slightly. We're going to have it so that our outputs, these all go along the top of here. Now the reason that I'm doing this is just so that we can cut down to one awesome sink. Remember, just make this one a Mark II line. And so there you are. We now have our steel beams and steel pipes being produced and being sent off to the storage units. Now we're just going to clean up the outside. We're going to uh, make sure that these are all prepped. And then we're going to decorate this. And finally, once we've got enough steel beams, I'm going to unlock the logistics mark 3 in the hub which will allow us to unlock the mark 3 belts and from here we can use steel beams to use the belts that run 270 resources per minute allowing us to clean the steel line that we've just done there you are much better obviously we've already decorated the coal power plant we could spend more time playing about with that but for now, the important thing is going to be cleaning this up. Um, well, you can see we've already cleaned it up, but now to um, cover it all up and give it a nice little wrapping. So we're going to go for a similar style to what we've done here. However, I want to try and do an angled roof. So we'll see how that goes. And I think we'll time lapse it as well to see how that looks. I have to say I'm quite happy with how this turned out in the end, though we still haven't unlocked all the things from the customizer that I would have liked to have. I was originally going to turn this into concrete to mimic the outside, um, but I actually quite like the darker feel that we have to it in here. We also have plenty of light, which is nice for within the factory, and I feel it sticks to our original theme that we were kind of going for with this build. There we are, much better. So there we are, guys. If you did like this video, make sure to drop a thumbs up. And obviously, if you do want to see more, don't forget to subscribe.
Here's hoping that with the previous three videos on a perfect start, you'll now have everything you need to start building a factory and getting everything manufactured. And don't forget you can download this save should you wish to so that you can play on it by checking out satisfactorytips.com where I'll put the save. Anyway guys, until next time, thank you so much for watching. And of course, thanks does go to all of our amazing supporters, most notably our Solar Eclipse patrons, the Calamity Cerebral Tag and James Owen, as well as our Lunar Eclipse patrons, Dixie Chris, Lord of July and Ben, as well as our Blood Moon of the Day, which today is Papa Snoozy. Anyway, guys, until next time, as always, ciao for now.